Okay, another fun question. Here we have a differential equation, but we don't know what n of x, y is. And our goal is to figure out the n of x, y, so that we can create an exact equation right here. Okay, so if you want to have an exact equation, that means this should come from the total differential, right, of some function, and we call that to be capital F. And let me put this down right here for you. This right here will represent the partial of f with respect to x, and this right here will represent the partial of f with respect to y. And we have to ensure the mixed partial are the same, right? So right here, this was the partial with respect to x already. I would like to take the partial with respect to y. Let me put this down. y times cosine of x, y, and then plus e to the x, like this. And we have to make sure this is equal to, we take the partial of n of x, y, with respect to, this was respect to y already, so we do it with x now. So let's put this down, n of x, y, like this. And n of x, y is a function in terms of both x and y. Okay, it seems that we can do something on the left hand side, so of course we go ahead and do it. y is the variable, x is the constant. Right here we have y times cosine of x, y. y and y, and we know we have to do the product rule. Let's go ahead and do that. Let me keep the first function, which is just y, and we will multiply by the derivative of the second. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so let me put this down as multiplying by, let me put this down in red, negative sine, and the input stays the same, so let's put on x, y. However, if you look at the inside, we have to multiply by the derivative of x, y. In the y world, x is the constant, so we have to multiply by x, okay, like this. This is the chain rule. And next, we are going to add, we're not done yet, right? This is the second part of the uh, product rule. We add the second function, which is cosine of x, y, and we multiply by the derivative of the first. The derivative of y in the y world is just one, and this is pretty much it, because next, the derivative of e to the x in the y world is just zero, so it doesn't matter. This is what we have. So we set this equal to the partial of uh, x with respect to x of n of x, y. Like this, okay? Well, let's clean something up first. For example, on the left hand side, I will put down x, y, and then with a negative sign in the front, so negative x, y, and this is sine of x, y, and we add it with cosine of x, y, and all in all, we want this to be the partial of respect to x of n of x, y. How can we figure out n of x, y? Well, we just have to integrate both sides, right? We integrate with respect to x, so that we can cancel things out. Let's go ahead and do that. Integrate this with respect to x. Okay. Let's see how can we integrate that. We have negative x, y times sine of x, y. We have to integrate that in the x world. In fact, we have to use integration by parts. So let me put this down right here for you guys. So I am going to integrate this right here, okay? We have to use the di method for the integration by parts. And I am going to be integrating sine of x, y. And I will be differentiating x, y. And depends on how you want to do it, you can have the negative in the front or uh, later on or up to you. But let me just differentiate negative x, y. And don't forget when you do the integration by parts with the di method, you must have the plus, minus, plus in front, right? Okay, here we go. I'm differentiating negative x, y with respect to x. So that means y is the constant. So right here, we will have negative y first. And then differentiate this again, we will have zero because the derivative of negative y, which is a constant in the x world, is zero. Integrate sine of x, y with respect to x. So y is the constant. First, when you integrate sine, you get negative cosine, and we have the same input. But y is the constant, the derivative of x, y, with respect to x is y, we divide by y, so we have 1 over y. And we do this again, right? We integrate this again, so we will have uh, the integral of cosine is positive sine, so the negative stays, and we have x, y, and we divide by y again, so we have 1 over y squared, all together like this. Okay, so there's no 
this and that will give you the answer. Altogether, it seems that we have negative x y times this. The y cancels out. The negative times negative become positive. We have the x times that only, right? X times that only. So let me put that down right here for you guys. First, we will have x times the cosine of x y. Okay. And next, we'll have this times this times that. Negative times negative times negative it is negative. So let's put that down. And y times one over y squared is one over y. So let's put that down as well. And right here, of course, we can put down the sine of x y. So let's put that down right here. Okay. So for the blue part, this is the result of this integral here. I accounted for the negative already because that's why I put down right here for the negative. So this is it. And we have to integrate cosine of x, y with respect to x. The integral of cosine is positive sine. So let me put down plus sine and the input states the same, which is x, y. But the derivative of x, y is y. So we have to divide by y. So this is 1 over y. All right. And this is pretty much it for the integration part. But we have to add a constant now, right? So this right here, we are not going to put on plus c because in the x world, y is the constant. So we are going to put down a function in terms of y because n of x, y is a function in both x and y. Okay, is there anything we can do? We see it, right? You see, this right here and that can sort each other out. At the end, I can just write this down uh, for you guys nicely. n of x, y is equal to that, which is x times cosine of x, y. And I need to add a function in terms of y. And this right here is it.